Hello and welcome to Whiteleaf in Surrey for Phil's Walk and Talk. So the format for this video is that I'm going to use the roundabout as my starting point and head off in each direction, enough to just show you the history. So I'm going to start off by going along towards Whiteleaf Hill and then from there I'm going to come back, go north on Godstone Road, then south on Godstone Road and then finish off going up Hillby Road towards Wallingham. And there's various bits of information and history that I'll impart with you as we go along that journey. So without further ado, let's get on our way. The Whiteleaf Tavern is directly opposite here. Been a pub here since 1855. And really that second part of the 19th century is where Whiteleaf expanded considerably when the railway stations came along. And there are two parallel railway lines with three stations that serve the area, which we'll see as we go through. So one of the things I will share with you as we go along here is why is it called Whiteleaf? Well, in many ways, the name's quite obvious because it relates to a white leaf. And it's actually the leaf of the white bean tree, which is quite popular in this area and I'll explain a bit more when we get up the hill as to where the actual naming originally came from and originally started. I will cross carefully, I've just missed the train. I just feel nervous when you cross these things. Hey! <laughs> oh dear, that's not the first time that's happened. <laughs> so this direction is towards both Kenley and Cape from on the Hill and further than that, Coulston. Now this is Hornchurch Hill, obviously developed nowadays, but back in the 1850s, Nathaniel Glover bought land that was behind here and that land was known as White Leaf Field. Separate words, White Leaf Field. In 1859, George Henry Drew built what was White Leaf House on White Leaf Field. The 1861 census confirms the existence of White Leaf House. And by 1881, White Leaf was referred to as one word without the Y. It was W-H-I-T-E-L-E-A-F. A bit later on, mapping around about the 1890s, we see the first reference to Whiteleaf as it's spelt today. So it took about 40 to 50 years to get from a separate white and leaf to the white leaf that we have today. And I found a 1940s map that makes a reference to Whiteleaf House Hostel as an annex to St Lawrence's Hospital in Cape on the Hill. So as I say, that was the exact location. Now it's White Beam View Houses. So that's the story. That's why Whiteleaf is called Whiteleaf. So let's pop down to St Luke's Church and have a look at uh, what's known as Airman's Corner, the Wargrave area there in the churchyard. So church road there that leads to AFC Whiteleaf. Whiteley Football Club. Not going to cover that today. Just heading into St Luke's Church that was consecrated in 1866. War Memorial there.
a train is due. It's actually quite exciting in a way uh, that this is happening while I'm filming this. It's frustrating if you're in a car and you want to get somewhere or working on business. It's the Caterham line into London Bridge. Well, it doesn't have a destination on there. There we go. That's the show over. Bit of excitement. So we're back at the hub, back at the roundabout. And I'm now going to take a walk down here. This is Godstone Road heading north. So the first bit is Whiteleaf, then it goes into Kenley. And ultimately into Purley and beyond. Very brief stop outside Raysbury Tyres. This has some really good memories for me because this is where a very young Phil Swallow would bring his Cortina to get the tyres done. And I'm sure all my mates did the same at the time. We lived not far away. Uh, just brilliant that it's still here 40 odd years later. So great to see. Over to my left, it's Maple Road there. The landscape rises up and behind that is the sort of Hamsey Green Riddlesdown area. We'll see a bit more of that later and how it all fits in. There's some good stories to tell further down that way, which in some ways are more suited to a summer walk, so that's the plan where we cover the Rose and Crown that's had an in there, well, from about 1743, I believe. Although it's pulled down many years ago now, there's just housing there now. And here we've got some Victorian properties, because that was the era where Whiteleaf grew. So the next section of the video is heading south on Godstone Road towards Whiteleaf South and Catrum, where I've also got another reason to do a video for that area. So again, I'm going to go so far, but there'll be more to come in the future. So just coming up to the roundabout now. Where I can continue the story. I'm walking along the main shopping area of Whiteleaf. There are some new developments on the other side there, and you know many of the shops are, are built on fairly new structures. And we saw the backs of some of these earlier, so you know, Schlink Cottage, There's new cottages, 1877. So it all fits in with that period that I was referring to earlier. Now, the Board Society is a fantastic local history organisation. I encourage you to look up their material, buy some of their books, which have helped me enormous, enormously. And go along to some of their sessions, become a member. But it's through what they do that really helps me with what I do. And what they do is issue blue plaques for certain key locations. So this is the Triangle House, and this was the first shop in Whiteleaf, originally a butcher's, now it's a private property. So this is St Luke's Road now, but it was Blacksmith Hill originally. And 
That is evidenced by this marvellous structure. We've got two doors there and some really nice brickwork and flint work. So we've got the old blacksmith shop on the right and the old wheelwright shop on the left. Yeah, quite wonderful structure. And in some of the Bourne Society publications you can see old photos of when it was being used to support local requirements for those services. And the Bourne Society have their directory of shops from Whiteleaf published. And I'll put a link in the video description. And one that I remember very fondly was here where Jamie's Dry Cleaners was. Looks to be empty now. 244 Godston Road was Inquire Within, where they did cycle repairs and spare parts. And when I was younger, we, oh, younger, very young, we'd uh, whiz down the hill on our bikes and get, you know, chains and various other bits and pieces that we needed. And this was a go to place. It seemed to have good stock, good prices. Easy to get down, but going back up was always a bit of a challenge. So that was Inquire Within back in the day. Which is that Jack's hairdressing has been here a while, established 1946. Always brilliant where businesses can survive, you know, find a way to survive. I'm on my way from Whiteleaf Centre to Whiteleaf South Station. And I came across this marvellous coal tax post been here since the 1860s. They form an irregular loop around London and they designed to show where coal tax is payable to the Corporation of London and existed for quite some years and then there were some challenges and eventually they were taken away. I think were, like now there's enough taxes to pay. So I was talking to the lady uh, who owns the house just next to it and I was asking about the upkeep because I've seen these in various states of cleanliness and uh, upkeep of paint and so on. And she said that uh, she initially contacted Surrey County Council. They put her onto the Corporation of London. A few emails went here and there. And within a week or so, they came out and painted it. I really believe that if you're in this neck of the woods, if you didn't notice them before, you certainly will notice them now. So you can put that one on me. Heading up as the road goes from single to dual carriageway. Got the uh, shell garage here. And making our way to Whiteleaf South Station. This is Whiteleaf South Station. Originally opened in 1856 and also originally called Wallingham Station. This is also on the Catrum line, so where we saw the level crossing come down earlier at Whiteleaf, this is the same line the trains go to London Bridge from this station. On my way out of this location, I'm going to just point out a very general area, and I know this is super wide angle. So this is the A22 Godston Road, and straight ahead of me now, where you can see some trees and houses, Wallingham is on the top of that hill. So it made sense in a way that this was a kind of extended or greater part of Wallingham, hence the, the original naming of the station. But there's quite a bit of history in that general area. So that's another one on the list, basically, because there's quite a bit of great history about that valley area, both sides of the, uh, of the main A22 road. So I'm now going to head up towards Upper Wallingham Station, past what was always a very popular fish and chip shop on the corner that the Norman family rang back, back in my day. And uh, we'll have a walk down from the station towards Hilby Road and finish at Whiteleaf Recreation Ground, otherwise known as the Dobbin. Back towards the shops. We've got the fish and chip shop on the corner. Salisbury's fish and chips. And we're heading up to Upper Wallingham Station. This was called Upper Wallingham Station because Whiteleaf South Station was Wallingham Station. It's actually lower because Wallingham is up a hill. And originally, Wallingham Rugby Football Club was called Upper Wallingham. 
Rugby Football Club. And uh, they changed the name because no such place exists. How bright they were. But the station has remained. So this station is on the Oxted line. So southwards you can get to East Grinstead and Uckfield and northwards to London Bridge and London Victoria. And K Tax Taxes has been there for many years. So we've been north towards Purley and Kenley. We've been south towards Catrum. We've been west towards Kenley Aerodrome, up by the church, really where the story began and where the name began. And finally, we're going to head east up Hillbury Road slightly and finish off at Whiteleaf Recreation Ground, also known as the Dobbin. I think I used to call it the Dobbins. Some people may still call it the Dobbins. But apparently, it's the Dobbin. I do remember at the end of this road, on the other side of the little mini roundabout, there was a business called Electric Old Refrigeration. I remember their illuminated sign. And I think it was where the gap is. In other words, the houses were there and maybe some land was purchased that included that premises and they knocked it down and built through. And now we're going to head under the railway bridge, which is on the uh, Oxted line. So Hilbury Road will take us up to Wallingham. We've got Westall Road here winds its way round, also up to Wallingham. Some history to that area of land. Might get time to tell it one day. Gates dedicated to the memory of Sir William Jones. I've known this for quite some time and I've never known these gates to be used. The lock has corroded and some very old chains there. Let's head to Whiteleaf Recreation Ground, aka the Dobbin, for the final part of the video. There was once a putting course, it wasn't pitch and putt, it was putting over the far side just beyond the tennis courts you can see in the distance and a young Phil Swallow got a hole in one once hole number five I recall left to right swinging putt didn't get anything for it didn't have to buy a round of ice lollies or anything so this beautiful space has been well kept for many many years great for dog walking as a whole play area right ahead of me. It was also used for filming parts, a small part, of the 1956 film Reach for the Sky about the life of Douglas Bader, starring Kenneth Moore. And in that there's a, a cricket match being played. So this is prior to Douglas's terrible accident. And that very scene is pretty much where I'm standing now. I believe the cricket square is in this kind of area. If indeed they have a cricket square nowadays, I can't be sure. It may not be the case, but uh, it certainly was in this uh, area. And I'm going to put a link in the video description for another video I found that shows that scene. Now, I'm not sure how long it will survive there. Um, but if you're lucky enough to see the film, then you will see the cricket scene that was played here and recorded here, filmed here. 
uh, but you'll also see a number of shots of Kenley Aerodrome. Now, in terms of how we got here as kids, so straight ahead, looking around, this tight pitch shore lane goes all the way around. And then we've got Hamsey Green above and it goes off towards, you know, Warningham, Sarnestead, etc. And there is an entrance at the top of the hill just as it starts to flatten out. So if you're coming from Whiteleaf now up towards Hamsey Green, it's on your left, public footpath. And that is how we used to get to the Dobbin. We used to go through that public footpath, often slide away down the hill, uh, and then we come out here. Now, I've probably not taken that route since I was a kid. And I certainly wasn't gonna chance it today because it'll be extremely slippery. But uh, one day I might do that because in this wider area, so I'm where the camera's facing now, albeit all you see is just an expansive park with a few trees. We've got the railway line in the sort of immediate foreground and right on cue. And we've also got some quarry areas that are going to be part of my Kenley video. There were some originally some tea rooms up near Wallingham Court Farm, uh, long gone. Um, Wallingham Court Farm's not there anymore, the farm building. There's a lot of history in this area that kind of combined together to form a complete picture. Just had a lovely chat with a couple, filled in some details. There's some water kind of draining away from a, a sort of underground pipe, I assume. And uh, I wondered if it was any connection with the Bourne, but it isn't. It's just sort of drainage for this area. Uh, I guess to keep it away from the football pitch. Found out that uh, there's been no cricket pitch here for many years. So it kind of looks like it. The, the goal areas are so well worn. I just don't see how you could then use that for, for cricket. And we had a bit of a reminisce of, about the local area. So that is my walk and talk for Whiteleaf. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, discovery of Whiteleaf and learning about its naming and its history. Uh, very much growth time in the Victorian period and obviously regularly since then. I don't go back too far on these videos. In my research I did find out that there were mammoths roaming this area uh, in many thousands of years BC but I can't really point to anything for that so I left that alone. Thank you so much for watching my White Leaf Walk and Talk. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I appreciate your support, and I'll see you in the next one.